Thank you um, so much, Mr. Feinstein, for that speech. Now we move on to our second speaker for the opposition. So continuing the case tonight for the opposition is Julia Sokolska. Julia is a first year student reading law at Queen's College. She won the right to speak through an open audition. Julia, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be familiar with the legal concept of the defense of justification. It was defined by Justice Van Wall in State and Lateholm as the product of society's determination that the actual existence of certain circumstances will operate to make proper and legal what otherwise would be a criminal conduct. I will use this definition to prove that there is certain circumstance, that is, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, that operates to justify the existence and maintenance of the British arms industry. Of course, there are certain circumstances that will never render what is criminal conduct proper and legal. It is true that since 2008, the UK has exported arms worth £14 billion to Saudi Arabia and £574 million to Israel. It is true that the exported UK fighter jets were used by Saudi Arabia to conduct approximately 1,727 airstrikes on Yemeni civilians in 2020-2021. And it is true that the UK provided approximately 15% of the components of the F-35 stealth bomber aircraft that is currently used by Israel and Gaza. These military enterprises of Saudi Arabia and Israel should be taken to The Hague and probably would be proclaimed war crimes by the International Criminal Court. However, these are enterprises of Saudi Arabia and Israel, not the United Kingdom. Alternatively, the maintenance of the British arms industry could be justified by one overriding necessity, to provide security to the United Kingdom, to provide security to Ukraine, and to provide security to the West, NATO allies, and who knows, perhaps the entire world. Yes, please. Thank you very much for the information. But let's not forget who is the ultimate decision maker who leads to this catastrophe. And I think that in terms of causation, we should, only, we should mainly focus on the direct effect, direct effect of the consequence. So, moving on. When it comes to the, uh, what I was saying is that the maintenance of the British arms industry could be justified by one overriding need, which is security. And now let's focus on the context, geopolitical context in which we live. Following Russian in, uh, invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Russia threatened to every state that sent armaments to Ukraine that it would use middle-range ballistic missiles against it, or perhaps even threaten nuclear weapon as it did last Thursday. Considering this fact, and the fact that the, UK, that the UK rendered military assistance worth £7.1 billion to Ukraine, the implication is that its security is under direct and real threat. On this account, let's now consider what would happen if the, the uh, British arms industry were taken to The Hague. It could be, as the proposition uh, endorses, be convicted of war crimes. Maybe its leaders would be sentenced for imprisonment, and primarily, it would have a disastrous impact on the military security across the world. The immediate impact of such a conviction would be substantial reduction or cease in the production and sales of arms, as well as loss of profits. But this loss of profits would not only be for the private military corporations who produce weapons for this primary purpose, but it would also be for the state budget. In 2022, the BAI systems alone had a tax contribution of 2.7 billion to the budget of the state. That means that we can think of this kind of number when it comes to the loss the UK government would suffer if this arms industry would to cease operating. Uh, not yet, thank you. And when it comes to the further impact of such a conviction, 
Well, the UK government would be forced to withdraw, substantially decrease its current investments in its military security, both in terms of defensive and offensive enterprises, and thus, as I will prove in a moment, will have a further disastrous impact not only on the UK, but also on other of our allies. And no thank you. When it comes to the defensive enterprises, the UK has made a deal with US F-35 Joint Project Office to purchase 75 F-35 jets and to produce British engines that would be then implemented to this jet. Furthermore, the UK is the leader of the Global Combat Air Programme, which aims to develop sixth-generation stealth fighters that could replace Eurofighter Tufons, which are currently in service in the Royal Air Force. Why are these developments so significant? It is because they are able, the new engines and the new modernized fire jets would be able to detect and to launch anti-ballistic missiles that would then be able to counter Russian ballistic missiles much quicker. And that means that if the UK loses funds that it has from the profits of the arms industry, it would lose funds for this investment and it won't be able to respond to one of the first threats that is posed by Russia that I mentioned at the beginning of my speech. Yes, please. Firstly, I would say that it's not unrestricted, but because if we check the government's policy with all the system of writing license, with the six criteria that are very specific that every uh, company needs to satisfy before it is e given the license, that proves that there is actually strict control and the government is well aware who is sending the weapons to. And the second thing is that the conflict in the Middle East are not strictly related to the current conflict in Ukraine, and they do not, as opposed to the current conflict in Ukraine, pose a direct threat to the security in Europe. And now moving on to the offensive enterprises, which are equally important. The UK has Royal Navy naval bases in Scotland, for example, Her Majesty Naval Base Clyde, which perform a significant function because they allow to dock British submarines that carry Trident 2DP nuclear missiles. It is of vital importance to have these missiles because they amount to a nuclear deterrent. And as we know, since Russia is now uh, directly threatening nuclear war, it must be aware that the NATO allies have nuclear arsenal and are capable of retaliation. And that is the importance of this weapon. No, thank you. However, if the UK lost funds to finance these bases and consequently they were forced to close them down, it would send a very clear political message not only to Russia but all the uh, enemies that the UK may have. And that is, the UK without its nuclear deterrent is weakened and prone to attack. Similarly, NATO as the alliance that is in the forefront of supporting Ukraine in the current invasion would also be weakened because without nuclear deterrence, all the threats given by Russia are even more real. And that means that the co direct consequence would be that we cannot really defend ourselves, defend Europe against any of the threats that are substantiated and are absolutely real when it comes to Russia. But in addition to its importance for the security of the UK and NATO alliance, the British arms industry is also a key to protecting Ukraine itself. As opposed to other exports of weapons, those weapons that are transported to Ukraine, they are gratuitous. That means that in this situation, since we don't sell them, we need to have another source from which we can collect funds. And that means that only the profit that is made from exporting weapons, which is so significant part of the, UK, uh, the UK's economy, gives us real possibility to then fund and send all these weapons to Ukraine. So, what if we lost this fund because of such a conviction in The Hague? That would be the exact effect that Russia has been trying to achieve ever since it invaded Ukraine. It would be some sort of a favor for the enemy. Why is that? Because if Ukraine loses all its weapons due to the lack of funds, that means that Russia would now have like an, would be able to conduct an unrestricted invasion in Ukraine, possibly spread the violation of conflict to other countries, and we would also risk further human rights abuses. And now let's wonder, by taking the British arms industry to The Hague, the proposition wants to prevent further human rights violations. But if it's taken to The Hague and if it's convicted, then we are basically facilitating human rights abuses in Ukraine. Isn't it the exactly adverse effect to what the proposition argues in this debate? On this account, I would like to urge you all to vote for the opposition because the profits produced by the British arms industry to the UK are a guarantee of military security in the UK itself. 
in Ukraine and in the West NATO allies. Whereas before February 2022, the maintenance of armed industry would be perhaps difficult to justify in the context of a direct threat posed by Russia, it's an overriding necessity. Thank you very much.